All right, the police arrive um, approximately how long after she exited the house? I'm going to say roughly 30 minutes. Point to herself, we're point on the wall where she had ran into the wall. I mean, she, she was, we were both drunk, as I said, and she was. She, and she went into the house and, you know, turned on light switches, did this, did that. All that stuff happened. That, that's the truth. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jeffrey Ian Paschal, guilty of We, the jury, find the defendant, Jeffrey Ian Paschal, guilty of Katie from Without a Crystal Ball, welcome back to my channel. You know when they say that something bad happens to someone and they say it couldn't happen to a better person and it means like the person that it happened to was just so bad that you're just glad that that bad thing in terms of the justice that was served on here was a good thing. I know it's a convoluted story but I am pleased to tell you guys something that has been something I have been waiting for for a very long time and a individual I used to cover on this channel but stopped because of his antics towards female journalists female and other female bloggers, female reporters, vloggers, whatever you want to call anyone that covered the story of Jeffrey Paschal. I stopped along with a lot of other people because of the way that he treated people, trolled them, whatever. So Jeffrey was a star of 90 Day Fiance. He famously appeared in the 2020 episode that was very very big for ratings it was during the pandemic the height of the pandemic everyone was watching it his storyline was about him and varia and him going to russia to potentially fall in love with her and get married she turned down his proposal there was a period where they broke up she came back he got involved with someone else and then during this whole season it came out that while he had been filming and during the period of time that he had broken things off with Faria, he went back to the United States and he got arrested and he got arrested for something really big, like huge. And it was involved DV, it involved kidnapping and it involved interfering with someone calling 911. And this all was released on the heels of the premiere of the season and the details started to leak about what he had done to his ex fiance, whose name was Kristen. And there was a D, uh, a restraining order that was reported by Starcasm. Court records started getting co coming out. It was revealed that he already had been in federal, uh, the federal system for a charge, an unrelated charge, but nonetheless spent time behind bars in the past, had a very lengthy rap sheet, had a lot of women in his past that were making humongous allegations against him. And so with the arrest, people were really upset, like TLC, why are you bringing this guy on TV? He's out on bail. You know, he's using this platform to degrade the woman that he uh, did this to. He's consistently calling her a liar in a conspiracy. He accused her of working with his other ex who he was in a custody battle with. And he said that she had fabricated the whole story so that he would lose custody of his children, which is far-fetched, horrible, and de really degrades the experience that what this person went through and what he did to her. And so after a ton of delays, like forever, I was so starting to worry that this was literally never gonna go to trial. It did go to trial. And throughout that time, Jeffrey has created a, had created a very toxic space in the 90 Day Fiance community to the extent that some bloggers stopped even covering it, to the extent that he was getting involved with uh, fans, allegedly, and getting women to other people that were saying things about him. There was a string of women that came out against him saying and alleging a lot of horrific things that he was doing. And then he had his staunch supporters and he had a fan base that seemed to eat up everything that he did and said. TLC did cut him from the tell-all and he wasn't included in anything after that, but it didn't matter because after he had been on TLC on the highest rated like 90 Day Fiance in years, he had a level of fame and notoriety that gave him a public platform to truly make it seem like the victim in this case was lying. And she wasn't lying because he was convicted yesterday and he is now on the heels. He could eventually be sentenced to over 30 years in prison. There is good news here. There is justice. What happened in court? It was a two day trial. 
Jeffrey testified, the victim testified, the neighbor testified, the police officer at the scene testified. There was evidence of the injuries that were sustained by Kristen. There was the powerful testimony of Kristen. And they offered me no punishment whatsoever just to have it on my record. I said, no, absolutely not. And he had um, me by the back of my head and was hitting my face into the floor. And I was screaming for him to stop. And there was Jeffrey who got on stand and couldn't answer the basic questions about whether or not he showed up on a YouTube channel and was doing an interview and couldn't answer those kinds of questions, but could remember every single detail of the events of the night. And in his eyes, he said that what happened to his ex-girlfriend was self-inflicted and that she literally ran into the door and that's why she had the injuries that she did. The images, which I am not going to share on this channel, I did share on my Instagram if you would like to see them. I did post a trigger warning. They are extensive, they are horrific, and what this girl, what this woman went through is not anyone, what anyone should go through. Basically, she alleged and described in great detail about the night that this all happened and how he effectively, he banged her head into the wall or banged her head into the floor. He allegedly dragged her across uh, her floor by her neck, dragged her up the stairs, uh, threw her up against walls. She had bru she was bruised from head to toe. She had two black eyes. She had a uh, a knot in her in her forehead the size of a fist. She had a concussion. There was blood all over the house, according to the police. There were spatters everywhere on the walls, handprints. It was all over the house, and he trying to say that this was her being drunk and uh, she was out of control and he blamed her attacking him because of her, him dating another female. Some drama in the case, there was a, uh, the defense tried to get a mistrial because they wanted to claim that the witness uh, in the case didn't keep some evidence. There were some arguments back and forth about what evidence could be admitted, what evidence could not be admitted. The 911 body cam footage was given redacted the witness on the scene uh, the neighbor she described everything that happened that night including bringing Kristen to the hospital and you know witnessing what occurred you know she was held in her house for over two hours he took her keys he took her car uh, he took her keys it was her house by the way he took her keys he took her phone and proceeded to go into her phone according to her testimony delete all messages from him delete all emails from him, delete all photos with him, and would not let her leave. He, she said he wouldn't even turn the light on so that she could see what she looked like, and he made her stay there. She was not allowed to have her phone. She could not call for help. She was in considerable pain, and she needed to go to the hospital. There was some criticism of the prosecutor. People were saying that she almost lost the case for him. You know, I don't care what the commentators say about how she performed um, for them on court TV. I don't care what their critical could critique of her because she did a good enough job in this case because the jury deliberated for less than two hours. I'm not kidding. This was a two day trial and they deliberated for less than two hours and he was found guilty on all counts. We the jury find the defendant Jeffrey Ian Paschal guilty of aggravated kidnapping. And as to count two, how does the jury find? We, the jury, find the defendant, Jeffrey Ian Paschal, guilty of domestic violence. And as to count three, how does the jury find? We, the jury, find the defendant, Jeffrey Ian Paschal, guilty of interference with emergency call. Thank so he's found guilty. Immediately, the judge revokes his bail and his bond, and he is now an inmate in Knox County Detention Center. I just grabbed a, a photograph of his mugshot and you know he looks disgruntled he looks angry he looks frustrated even this week i was told that he was on instagram lives and he was bragging that this was going to go nowhere that he was not going to be found guilty that he was assured that he was going to get out of this he still had people believing even like his friend mary who was literally in court sitting there as his cheerleader mary who's the one that appeared on 90 day fiance she was crying when he was convicted and he just sat there and acted like it's fine everything's good we're, we're still gonna find a way to get out of this 
Jeffrey is what I would call a narcissistic abuser. I am not a diagnosed professional here, but he is so unequivocally a, a female hater. He goes after women constantly. He seems to only target women. He, in the entirety of covering that, that show and those people, and specifically Jeffrey, I have never witnessed someone that is so vile, so hateful, and so awful to any woman, whether it was someone he was interested in, um, whether it was a fan, or whether it was someone that covered him. And I was not the only person that he did this to. He did this to a variety of bloggers. So I'm just grateful that the victim in this case is receiving justice. I'm also grateful that he can no longer torment the fans and the woman, the victim in this case, I'm so glad that he no longer can have any more victims. He has th used his fame to get a ton of women and to uh, have relationships with them, use them, do horrible things to them. And now that is done. He is now behind bars. He is an inmate at Knox County Detention Center. He is um, inmate number 244261 and he will be staying in prison until he's sentenced and the judge could sentence him to over 30 years in prison. So he has a lengthy rap sheet. He is already a convicted felon. I don't expect him to get to the minimum of eight years. I expect him to get somewhere in between eight and 30 years. He is in his 40s, so I'm good with him being behind bars for a couple decades. Let him sit there, let him rot, let him get, get the punishment that he so rightfully deserves and have the victim get justice in this case. And I'm so proud of her for using her voice and for testifying against him. It had to have been so unnerving. The defense, the defense, the defense was trying to pick apart her relationship with him and trying to make it seem like she was intoxicated and that she didn't remember. It was a lot of victim shaming. And now Jeffrey is going to exactly where he needs to be. The uh, bigger question here is why the hell does TLC keep doing this? TLC knew about him. They knew about this charge. They knew he had been arrested and they refused to take it off the air, allowing him to grow his popularity, grow his platform, and then use that platform to degrade, threaten, intimidate, and harm the witness in this case, to also target new women in the event of, you know, using his platform to get whatever he wanted from women. It's unacceptable. It's irresponsible. And they didn't allegedly drop this because they had invested so much time and money into it. How do you not, or how do you not drop a story just because of the money? They let go of the Duggars after all the money they put into it. Why? This man was charged with almost as bad as Josh, if you ask me. It's just different crimes. TLC really needs to start to think about why they have a network that is so focused on misogyny and hatred of women and the treatment and the sexism that exists in these programs of shows where women are not portrayed in ways that they are strong, powerful, and confident, and instead are parts of cults and men are in power and sister wives and all of these huge families of Christian values where the moms are in cults and subservient to their husbands. Or, you know, why do they continually platform men like Jeffrey? Toby Willis, Josh Tugger, there's so many, the list goes on and on. So I'm so grateful that Jeffrey is behind bars. It's exactly where he needs to be. He can no longer hurt people for a very long time. And he needs, he is where he should be. He should actually, in my opinion, never be free again, but that's not a possibility. They can't give him life in prison for that. I'm again, proud for the victim for testifying. I'm grateful that she's gonna get the justice that she deserves. And I truly hope that the wider public that believed the crap, the crap that came out of his mouth uh, wake up and realize that he's the one that lied. He did these terrible things and he's a horrible man in my opinion. All right, you guys, tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye guys.